we go with the Tri-State Audi Knicks postgame show. A magical game for Emmanuel quickly in Orlando. A triple-double. One of the assists to R.J. Barrett, who had 27 bouncing back off the off game yesterday against Cleveland. How about Obi Toppin? A new career high 20 yesterday. Matched tonight. 20 again for Toppin. A lot of Knicks fans loving this in Orlando. As the Knicks at one point led it by 35 for their biggest lead of the season, and they win it by 30. 118-88, matching their biggest win of the season in terms of point margin. Great to have you with us from our Delta MSG studios. Bill Pito along with Alan Hahn. I can tell you, if Tom Thibodeau could draw it up, he could not have drawn it up any better. You got the win, you got great experience for the young guys, and they came through from top to bottom. Everyone played really well. Yeah, it was important to get this kind of a bounce back after the Saturday performance, that first and foremost. And then, of course, you're going, after, uh, going up against an Orlando team that's already has the worst record in the league and missing a lot of key players for them as well. So this was one you wanted to see this be a 30-point lead, put it on them, and they did that. And they did that in front of a lot of Knicks fans down in Orlando, too. And how about Emmanuel Quickly? We keep talking about him. This is the best of what has been a great run for him, 20 points. 10 assists, 10 rebounds, and we are talking about it before we came on the air. They have a major decision to make. Is he maybe the guy for the future in terms of the point guard? And if he is, that changes the whole decision-making progress in the offseason. It's a little bit early for that, for that conversation. It's not but early. The, but it's the way he's early. playing, this is a major decision for this organization. Yeah, today. and you would think that if, if the belief was that he was, that he'd be starting now instead of Alec Burks. You know, like that's the one question you have is, if the, if the belief was that Emmanuel Quickly is your future point guard, your answer, the long-awaited answer at that position, which if you ask Quick in a private conversation, he will tell you, yeah, I want to be that guy. Now, he did play 34 minutes, no, so he, maybe it doesn't matter. No, he you gets know? minutes, though. He plays. He plays in the fourth quarter. In terms quarter, of starting, I mean. But it's just, it is interesting that the starting position, he has not been handed that yet. But that doesn't mean he wouldn't if the offseason goes a certain way. You have to, you know, see where that heads. But you cannot argue with the production, especially since the All-Star break that you have gotten from him. The, just the energy right there. And as I've, we've talked about with him, rebounding from the guard position, th that is something that he is starting to master. He reads the ball very well. You get a lot of long rebounds in this league. And he takes a long rebound. He takes those rebounds, and he gets going. He gets you into offense fast. He's not a guy that will walk it up the floor. I think that's also been important to when he's on the floor, the pace they play at. The ability to get into offense as well. 34 minutes plus 18. Now, the youngest triple-double by a Nick player since 1956, Kenny Sears. So that's number one. But also off the bench triple-double, you go back to 1991, Mark Jackson, to, to have another former a, a Nick player to go for a triple-double. So the production that he's given you off the bench does certainly now lead to conversations to have as you finish the season. Three games to go. You want to see Emmanuel quickly finish this season strong and give the Knicks and the front office something to think about as they go into this offseason wondering how to fill that position. And our uh, check of the box score again in the turnover column for quickly, one. Magic number. One. Just keep it two or minutes. lower for, for a guy playing 35 minutes and handling the ball as much as he's handling it. That is also a part of it that I also think is not talked about enough. His assisted turnovers and then, of course, the defense that he does play. Not a lot of defense in this game, but still, him himself – he gets after it on that end of the floor as well. Knicks blew it open, Allen, late in the second quarter. They finished the half on a 13-2 run, and then they started the third quarter on a 7-0 run, and they blitzed the Magic in the third quarter, outscoring them 37-15. Yeah, and the second quarter got a little dicey because, like I mentioned, this lineup, they did not have a stellar lineup out there, but their vets came in, and, the, and they got into a one-point game. In fact, the Magic had to lead for like 30 seconds. The Knicks had a great close of the half, and then they opened the half. You see Burks there with that three. You see Mitch here. That's a 7-0 start to the half. Knicks went up by 17 points. And the route was on. R.J. Barrett driving to the basket there. Again, a 70-53 at that point. Alec Burks was on fire in this game. In fact, he hit uh, all three of his threes. And he knocks one down there. And then there's, of course, quickly Obi Toppin transition. Obi goes for 20 points again in this game. And you can hear the Knicks crowd. You can hear the Knicks faithful there. They were chanting Obi's name. They were chanting R.J. Barrett's name. They were having some fun down in Orlando, the, the Knicks' last visit down there to Orlando for the season. Burks was a plus 44. Obi was a plus 46. 46. I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen anything. Have, you ever, plus have you ever seen anything like that in before 35 in your life? minutes. <laughs> we'll have more on Obi coming up. Uh, but we also got to talk about R.J. Barrett because this was the kind of game where you look at the boxers. R.J. had 27? Yeah. 
R.J. Barrett had 26. Obviously, four for 18 yesterday. Mm -hmm. Bounced back well today. Yeah, tonight. yeah, and, and he needed to, of course, and got off to a decent start in that first quarter and then kind of, like, let the game settle in. But during this run, as they were blowing this game open, and again, if you're in that Nick locker room at halftime and you're up by 10 points, you're looking around saying, guys, let's blow this thing open in third quarter. Let's not give this team any hope at all. And that's what he was part of, is doing that. 9 of 20, I mean, that's a good, that's a good number. But, Bill, if you're looking at that stat line right there, the 27 points, what's the stat that jumps out at you besides the 27 points? Uh, the rebounding and six the assist. Assists. Six assists. Six assists for, for R.J. Barrett. Continuing to be a playmaker as you're, well. You're quizzing me here nightly. Uh, i got to be on my toes. I want you to pay attention. I'm it's paying attention. There's no why. I am, no I, I'm, I, I, I'm with you. All right, so you're with me. You understand that with R.J. Barrett. The rebounding I mean, is solid, sport, though, too. I he's mean, always had yeah. that part of it. The, but the most important thing for him is as defenses start keying on him, sending a double, sending that extra big to, to try to keep him from getting into the paint, it's his awareness and his vision to be able to know he's coming here, I make a pass, I can make a pass for an easy basket, I can make a kick out for an open three. We have seen him as he's become sort of the centerpiece of the offense now in the second half of the season. He has shown you that he can do that. And that's a very valuable thing. It's not as easy as it looks, but his awareness to where the open man is is also a key part to his development as an offensive threat. Other uh, important numbers here in terms of development. Quentin Grimes back trying to shake off yep. the rust. Wasn't as good in terms of contribution as Deuce McBride at eight points. And how about Jericho Sims fills up the box score. He had four points and five rebounds in about 20 minutes of playing Yeah, time. all the young guys. That's what you want to watch is, is, is those guys and see how they continue to develop. It was great just to see that Deuce... Quinton get back into the lineup after both of them dealing with some knee issues. With Grimes, you kind of feel bad because he had been playing really well. 14 seconds into the second half of the season, they come back from All-Star break, he gets into the game. That's when that knee issue happened for him. And for a shooter like he is, and also a guy that's going to fight through screens, when your legs aren't right, when that knee's not right, it's going to affect the way you play. So it's good to see him back on the court. But you can't really judge a lot of what you're seeing from him because you know that he's probably physically not near 100%. Grimes, one for five in the game, has scored two points. But overall, a great game for Tom Thibodeau and the young core as the Knicks now 10-6 and six in the last 16.